Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about what textbooks are useful for the first two years of medical school. So I go to a Canadian medical school. These are just things I found useful. So I'm actually quite minimal when it comes to textbooks. I knew from undergrad that I didn't like having a ton of textbooks. So this is kind of a very bare bones minimum. This first book, the most essential book and of everything I tell you today, I think the one you should get your hands on is the OSCE and Clinical Skills Handbook. So there's a bunch of different resources you can get. Um, there's another one called Bates, but I really like this one. Um, for one, I, I like things succinct. I don't like huge paragraphs, which I think was a problem for the Bates for me. It starts off with an overview of anatomy, just different definitions, which are really helpful. Not necessary, but the meat of what makes this book amazing is that for it gives you a whole bunch of different presentations because a patient's not going to walk and be like, I have heart attack. Well, maybe, but they're usually going to come in and say, I have chest pain or I am unable to breathe, or they're gonna tell you about a symptom, not the actual diagnosis. So I really appreciated that in this book, they had this, for example, this one is the differential diagnosis of chest pain. It could be, it tells you, it could be a vascular problem. Maybe it's a heart attack, maybe it's some other vascular problem. It could, infectious causes, traumatic causes, autoimmune allergic causes, metabolic causes, uh, cancers, substance abuse, congenital. Um, and it just gives you a whole bunch of, it's not very detailed, it's just a list, it's bullet pointed, but that's really all I need. And so if I don't know any of these in particular, I can look them up. But I just want a short, quick summary, um, which I find really handy because that's sometimes how they pimp you in school is like, so-and-so comes in with this, like, give me a list of things you think it could be. So you, having like this to learn from is really handy. And then it tells you different questions to ask on history. For each system, it has a lot of different approaches to things. And so I haven't even read all of this book. I, I The way I've been using is just the ones that I want to learn. So preparing for my OSCE, what kind of systems that I've learned, I'm just going to read that one. The books, if you don't get anything else, like I think everything else is optional, but this one I would say I highly recommend. Um, and this one that I just recommended on another video and reviewed, I think this would probably be a really nice resource to have. One that I really want to get, uh, I recommend my friend Brian, is the Ed Edmonton Manual. I have looked at someone else's copy and I actually really like it. So it's the same idea as this, uh, different approaches. So like, how would you approach abdominal pain? How would you approach someone who has decreased vision, uh, headache, and how to, like, what questions should you? So it would start off with all the different things, different diseases it could be. So headache, maybe it's a head problem, blah, 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 right? And then, and then the, the history questions you should ask the patient, and then the physical exams, and then the labs and investigations, like x-rays or um, CT scans that you should order, and then um, a bit of management. And I like that one because it's laid out exactly as I like it. It has a, like a table, a really short table for the history, and then the management and things are like bullet points that are well spaced. Um, but it, it's it's bigger, it's a bigger book. So it's called Pathology for the Health Professions. I, all these books were available on Amazon. Because the layout of it is just so intuitive. It has some beautiful diagrams. Uh, I lied when I said the only one you should buy is the OSCE. I actually think you should get this one as well. It's just it's just it's just so helpful to understand. I I think other people can buy things like the the has it Guyton Hall, like these really big thick physiology textbooks. I don't really feel the need to learn everything in so much detail, but I do like an overview um, of all the different things. So for example, cardi heart tumors. There's a there's a whole you know there's a little section here, and it's just like a bit of a I like that it's a summary. It's just like what do you really need to know um, as a in terms of clinical importance, and then it also has some pearl like clinical pearls, and I really like having pictures and diagrams and all that goodness so i actually really like this one again i didn't read this cover to cover but i did find this quite helpful if you're taking the step one um, which is the u.s united states medical licensing exam um this is a highly recommended resource even as a canadian student i found this useful we have in, in canada we have toronto notes uh which is pretty good um but there's just some things in Toronto they don't cover that are more basic sciences that they cover a little bit better in this uh, first day. It's really well laid out. It's all bullet pointy and summary. It's a very, it's quite a hefty book. I do think I read over it as a resource for some things. I don't, I didn't never, I never read it cover to cover, but I got an atlas. This is the color atlas anatomy from Rowan. Uh, anatomy hasn't changed very much. 
um, over the last few years for the other ones like the pathology or the first aid I would try to get the newest edition because things change and treatments change and so it's nice to be really up to date on those that said I had the 2018 for the step one I, I don't think it's gonna make a big difference 20, 2018 2019 2020 whatever same idea I bought this off a upper year I think a fourth year when I was first started medical school so I would recommend doing that buying that off a third year or fourth year um, if you can and then it just saves you a lot of money um it has a lot of beautiful diagrams it's a um some other people get like stuff like netters and stuff which are, are kind of handwritten generated diagrams i really like seeing what it actually looks like so this is the skull and let's find something else there's an example here the brain and then there's different parts of the brain and then they have a one two three four so you can actually use it to quiz yourself um Really look at this and what do you what do you think it is and then you look down at the bottom of the answer i think it's designed to do that so it's quite nice again didn't have time to read this cover to cover but for there was a few systems where i found that helpful to do but this is not bad to get so those are the main like textbooks some other books that i found helpful this is a book called medical school 2.0 how to study i really took some good thoughts away from this this is the book i learned parkinson's law from work expands to fill how much time you give it so he talks about when you're studying, a good strategy to do is to set a fun thing at the end of the day and don't give yourself, you know, don't don't say you have to study all the way from 7 a.m. until 3 a.m. Um, you know, have something and take a break and that actually is good refreshing. And based, another idea like from this was the idea of trying to um, condense and not just bother to learn every single thing, but really take kind of 80 20 rule and just siphon out what are the most important things to know what are the most important resources to learn from so for example you guys saw my list of textbooks is really quite minimal compared to some people i don't think i don't really feel a need to be reading a bajillion textbooks uh, because that doesn't help me learn because i don't learn a ton from just reading um you know if that's your style then you do what is the thing that's going to help you learn the most so for me that's practice questions or that's anki um, those are things that help me learn. I think videos help me as well, uh, but I'm a terrible auditory learner, so I personally don't listen to a lot of podcasts, for example, and that I do listen to some, but I don't retain it very well, but for some of my classmates, they listen to a lot of podcasts. It's a main learning tool for them. Um, just like to know yourself, and if that's not something that's going to be your that part of the 20% of the learning that's going to give you 80% of the yield and don't you know don't do that right so maybe if you need then watch a few more videos because that's going to really give you knowledge that will stick it's just kind of a nice little a nice little read and just encouraging to read a journey of someone who just was studying too much not too much but just studying a ton and but also not doing well and then he morphed into someone who actually was studying less and less because he was honing his efficiency and um and then he was able to be more balanced and do really well and also just come out of med school happy and that's something i aspire to do i think i'm still learning that perfect balance i think even if you read this as a pre-med this would be still very useful um, these two books they're both from the success in med school series um this one is a little bit less useful this one's a little bit more useful um but this one's for the preclinical years i want to get the clerkship one when I get the chance. Um, it's not bad. Could be better. Problem with these, these are geared towards medical students in the States and it is, there's quite a few key differences between the States and Canadian medical schools, which is why I want to be part of the Canadian YouTube space to kind of provide, fill in that gap. But I still thought there's some pearls to take away from this, but I think remember to filter for yourself what's, what's relevant and what's not. But I think there's some pretty good um, tips for example, let's open this tip up um, This talks about how to find mentors in medical school and This one talks about some different ways you can get involved in community service as a medical student And this one is Yeah, again, I, I was really looking at the, the section about how to initiate a relationship with a mentor um, And so this one is this is for later in medical school. It's like rules to succeed in the residency match. Um, I thought there's just some, a lot of, it's very, it's very big and it's actually, you don't actually need to read all of it because it goes into some particulars for each specialty. So I think it's really like this half, this half that is just relevant to everybody. Um, just ideas for the interview, how to format your CV, how to ask for letters of recommendation, um, 
things like that that are useful to know for applying to residency so I think this will serve me well I'm not at that stage yet but um, because I didn't feel like I knew a lot about the process like what is the residency match and what does that even involve I just like reading it and getting a sense of what that what to look forward to and what that experience is about and then I felt less stressed about it because I was a little bit more informed and so for example if you're interested in emergency medicine there's a whole section on specific to emergency medicine what kind of skills are our program directors looking for and how important are how important is research how important is letter recommendations because not research isn't important for every field our uh, way rotations are important for every field and it's a little bit different so again the the problem with this is it's, it's for medical students in the states and it's a bit different in canada but you know it's a resource and um, you should never take one resource for its word and uh, but i still thought it was, i would recommend this book i think it's a nice read to help you alleviate some worries about what residency matches would involve so it's a good one so anyways, that was our roundup of the books that I think are really helpful for incoming medical students. There's a couple resources just for like how to do medical school better. Um, and, and then there's like a couple like good, you know, study resources and things like that. So anyways, I hope you guys thought this video was useful. This was inspired by one of my friends that just got into medical school who was curious about what kind of textbooks would be useful. And so I thought I'd make a video and share it with everybody else. Um, so anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're gonna have an amazing experience in your as you start medical school and let me know if you have any more questions or any um, things you'd like me to make a video about in the future. Bye! Remember to subscribe and like this video so the YouTube algorithm knows what's up.